Hey everyone, let's talk about the Legend of Mana collab units in detail today. It's Elazul and Pearl, or as you've seen her on my damage spreadsheet, Lady Blackpearl, that's her brave shifted name. For whatever reason, apparently people don't read these days anymore. Yeah, they didn't realize Lady Blackpearl is her brave shifted name. I don't know why you wouldn't know that if you just click on her name in the game but whatever lady black pearl is what she's called in a brave shift and that's faithful to the game as well and she finally learns to wield that hammer and stops being a burden for everyone all right let's check it out um two in one units though ilazola is very easy to cover let's get started we're starting with ilazul our wind slb chainer and what you're seeing here is literally all his kit there isn't much and he, there isn't anything else to his kit. He has a multicast, triple cast, and that's pretty much it. So Birds of Prey for his uh, 150x chaining ability, Cross Strike Elazul for his uh, Reaper Killer buff to self, two turns only, effectively one turn, and 120 light um, physical chain, no imperil, which is awesome. So absolutely useless. And then one of his global upgrades, amongst having higher base attack, which is very cool, um, it's his Lapis Lazuli Irrescendence buff or rolling amplification. So this one reads a 300 attack buff, which is nice, 200 LB buff, which is good. It's an upgrade from 150 from the JP server. And here's the rolling part. You've know, you know this from units such as Sukiko, uh, Chizuru, Sylvie. So this one starts off at 50% on a turn you use it. It uh, increases to 75% on turn 2 and on turn 3, which is the second auto cast. It is a whopping 100% wind amplification. Super cool. I love that they did this. Both units, Pearl and Ilazo, really badly needed some kind of buffs. They did well with this one, but sadly they didn't really strongly buff his LB slash SLB, that one almost remains unchanged. So the uh, brave, uh, the base form limit burst, the laser blade, has a 130 wind imperil, which he, for whatever reason, loses on his SLB. Even though this one is the so-called true laser blade. By the way, there is no true laser blade in the actual game. I believe his actual. Best ability is called differently, but it's definitely not true laser blade. This is just being Adams being super lazy, but so be it. Um, the SLB uh, whoops, is um, a 30% sword in peril. That's decent. Uh, four turns. Has another wind amp, which I don't know why they kept it when you have 100% any wave. But I guess if fights should last longer than... Uh, free turns. I guess this is why he has it. Though I highly suggest you finish out the fight with his SLB and the 100% amp. And for the content, he is um, meant for meaning dark visions slash vision world. It is sufficient to have that once in a while or once per fight. Grandis. So what's really good though is the 150% albeit self. Stone and Plant Killer, it is one turn, meaning just for the SLB you're using right now. And a 350x Wind Physical. Um, though, or Although this might sound rather low-ish, we have plenty of sources to increase that modifier. Tidus's STMR, which makes this already a 450x. There's Tyvus's STMR, which makes this a 480x. He has an auto attack which increases his LB modifier by another 50x, meaning we're at 530 already. And then there's good old Sylvie increasing that modifier to a final 550x LB wind physical modifier, meaning this is actually pretty strong and it's pretty much in line with the current meta DPS, Jacked, Titus, Trowned Oren, etc. So while this reads rather mid on first glance, when you take into account all the buffs and um, tricks we can use these days, this is actually very good. Especially when you combine this with his 
innately high base attack and all the buffs he can do himself himself it's actually decent all right let's take a look at his tmr stmr and vision card though the vision card is shared between pearl and elazul but the tmr that's really what you're all looking for on his or on this banner it's the sand uh, cloak i believe it's called 70 attack for an accessory pretty strong there are very few ones that are actually good but none are this good they have two rather rare killer types stone and plant especially plant killer is always highly welcome even if it is 50 percent and i like it just for that alone. So very, very good TMR. The STMR though, I'm rather disappointed they didn't change this, this, especially because we are in a true double hand meta and yeah, JP announced that they will take a look at true dual wheels again and buff it to some degree. We have no further details on that. And even with that in mind, it is at least seven months out before we get that. Meaning, and that would be if they did the true dual wheel buff next month, which is highly unlikely. Just take the amount of time it took them to go from we're doing another Esper to releasing it. Because I believe they announced that they're doing a new Esper six months ago and they just did with Garuda. So let it sink in for a while. I don't believe we will ever see a true dual wheel buff on the global server before next year today. I'm saying a 12 months out. Walk me on this, I probably won't be wrong. But nonetheless, uh, this is a true 300 attack, um, one handed sword with 50% stone and plant killer again, 50 LB damage and exclusive to Elazul 1000 static attack which stacks by the way and 100 true double hand attack which is kind of weird on a one-handed sword to have true double hand it should have re read a uh, true dual wield but i guess alum doesn't even play their own game anymore and doesn't know the difference between true dual wield and true double hand or they actually think we are this dumb to use a one-handed sword as a two-handed uh, sword we don't know but alum isn't known for decent unit slash kit designs the vision card is a another buff on the global version. It has 120 base attack and defense, 25 LB damage, which is rather and 50% stone killer physical magicka, and 300 static all stats, meaning attack, def, attack, defense, spirit, and magic. All in all, I'd say the TMR of Elazol is amazing. It is what you are actually looking for. And by the way, if you have enough um, trust coins uh, you need 20,000 in total you can go to the trust shop and get two empty prism moogles and in the mocking shop you will find two 50% moogles for Ilazul's TMR do what I did I bought both of these empty prism moogles and gave each one the 50% trust moogle from Ilazul's accessory that way even though I only pitied one Ilazul, I didn't pull any more sadly, I now have three of his TMR, which I feel like that's a good amount. Ideally, I'd like to have six, but I'm not going to pull any more uh, ever since the price increase. So three it is, but I feel like three is okay. Six to 12 would have been ideal. Uh, that way you could dish out a lot more killers, but I'll settle for three. It's better than nothing in this case. Um, the STMR currently worthless, might be decent um, in a year from now, but I'm fairly certain we will have much higher attack value swords or weapons other types uh, of other types by that time anyway. Vision cards still, or sadly, trash, um, low LB, low static attack, you're better off using um, uh, Knights of Grandchild card, Wilkes, no, not Wilkes card, but Titus's card as well, so there's Plenty better options, to, to be honest. Now let's take a look at Pearl. In the base form, uh, she is literally a burden. Uh, she doesn't do much. And as you can see at the bottom or below it on the left hand side, you'll find her entire base form kit. 
It's consisting of two abilities. One is hide, one is crouch. Uh, two passives and technically she has two um, passives uh, or one more. No, I think that's her entire kit actually. I, I, I believe that's her entire kit. And the synchro status recovery uh, that allows you to use or upgrade her normal attack via TMR or STMR equipped to be an all status ailment cure and it also uh, cures stop and charm which I guess is nice but I wouldn't call this a healer slash party support in any kind of form. So yeah, it is all about the brave shit. Uh, although I'll, let, let's be honest here, the base kit is actually very, very faithful to the actual Legend of Mana game because until the moment she actually um, becomes the Lady Black Pearl, she doesn't really do anything. She literally is a burden. And for the first few hours of the game, you will hate having her in your party. But once uh, she does get the Lady Black Pearl, quote unquote, upgrade, she is super strong in the game too. So it's, it's fine. And the Brave Shift in FFBE though, she is a Dark Limit Burst Chainer. And she too got that cool upgrade on her Grandis, which now is um, the 300 LB damage, the Rolling Amp starting at 50. Um, and ending up at 100% and it's also filling her LB gauge, which is... Now let's take a further look at her kit because she actually does have a kit to some degree. Um, even though she does have only three main abilities plus the multicast. So she has the light um, imperil that Illazol is missing on a 200x chaining ability. Absolute Murph Equity though, which is eh. She has a Blamo, which is a fire attack, only 150x modifier, but still 120 in peril. And what I really like is a, her synchro full single target meter, which um, is a single use, sadly. Uh, but it does fill the entire LB gauge or 60 LB crystals to one party member. And in return, it also fills her own after that yet again, which is awesome. It is a really cool ability and it's super versatile and I'm kind of sad it's just one use per battle. I would have loved if this was a an actual cooldown ability. Give it two turns cooldown, this would have been perfect. Such a cool ability and would have been more faithful to the original game as well. But I guess it is what it is. I will also mention that she has at EX plus 2 though a preemptive dark veil, which is a 200% preemptive dark resistance buff to the entire party. It lasts two turns, but there is a fight coming up in a future dark vision where the boss preemptively imperils and strikes you with a dark attack. And that preemptive dark imperil is, I believe, 100 or 200%. So for that case, Pearl is amazing. Sure. There is Cecil, he also has the 200% dark, uh, preemptive dark resistance buff, but you don't really want to use Cecil regardless um, if you're going for top 50, top 10 clears. So Pearl would be more beneficial in that case. I'm just putting it out there for those of you who are still interested in uh, wasting money on Dark Vision's top 10 clears. I certainly won't, but yeah, it is pretty good. And then there is the also upgraded, global upgraded auto attack or normal attack, which now has a 50x LB modifier for the entire fight and it's undispellable, which is really, really good. And if you've seen my damage uh, spreadsheet, you will have seen that I list a build which reads counter me. And let me show you what this means. So that's on the right hand side, the maximum damage rotation. Her Brave Shift is a trans shift. It lasts for four turns, meaning ideally on turn one, you limit burst. On turn two, you use Black Pearl Irrescendance, which is her rolling amp. On turn three, you use Tyvus' Spirit. And on turn four, you limit burst again. Now, if you don't have units such as Esther or Bulwark on the team, you use her auto attack or slash normal attack on turn three instead. That's fine too. But if you're going for counter attacks, 
you have multiple options. Like I mentioned, Discharge and Recharge, which is as this Brave Shifted ability, and that one allows you to counterattack. The, the unit needs to get hit and dodge or survive for that, obviously. But I would prefer Esther's ability, counter ability, because it's just a one X death scaling counterattack, meaning it is going to deal a very low amounts of damage and you're less um you're you're less you have less risk to accidentally kill the boss in, in this counter. Whereas Bulwark's counterattack is a 15 x um counterattack or with, with um normal attack 15 x which is kind of dangerous in case of Pearl because that would be a 195x ability and Dark Vision bosses tend to be rather fragile sometimes when they have the 90% breaks on them already. So that's kind of iffy. And that's why I would prefer Esther's one because it's just a 1x with defense scaling and Pearl has rather low defense. You're not running at risk to kill the boss on accident. Whereas you do with bulwarks um, ability even though it's spirit scaling but still um, it's uh, it's not that it's not that good <laughs> let me be that blunt about this and um, you have three chances at doing that counter it's turn one turn two turn three because on turn four it's game over you have to limit burst and finish out the fight and that is what this counter meme is all about it's basically just doing what you did with riser or Machina more Riku, and in this case, you're just increasing her limit burst modifier. The upside, or if you don't want to deal with that RNG ness, it's totally fine. The difference between countering and not countering is very small, as we will see in a few minutes. But yeah, that's a maximum damage rotation, rather simple, but you need that trick um, with the counter to absolutely maximize her damage potential. Again, this is probably just top 10 um, hemispheres. You don't need this. It's just a 2% increase. But if you want to have that upper hand against your competition, well, you're going to do it. And um, shout out to Uwe Bonnick on the Disc FFB Discord. He was the one who uh, brought this up to me in the first place. So I didn't come up with this. Uwe Bonnick did. All right, let's check out her limit burst and base Brave Shift limit burst. Her base limit burst is the funniest thing. I, I love this. Uh, I love the animation on her base limit burst. Uh, it perfectly represents me running around in panic mode each clash of wills when I have no idea what I'm doing. If you ever wonder what I'm, what I'm looking like um, in my mind when I first run uh, clash of wills, it's uh, like that. <laughs> and the. Brave Shift the Limitless Burst is actually the real deal. 25% hammer and peril. I kind of get why they're doing only 25%, not 30% or 35%, because hammers have such a huge variance range that it's absolutely ridiculous. They go up to 1.95x variance at the maximum range. And I kind of get why. Not only Alum, but also Gumi are rather abandoned to go to 30 or beyond on this. She also buffs LB damage by 200%, um, Dark and Pearls by 130 and has a stacking, although one stack only, which is good. LB that maxes out at 380x. Again, if this reads low, she has the option to increase those values as well, much like uh, Elazul does. And the cool thing about this is she goes up to 580x if you include her counter and Tyves Spirit. If you um, just auto attack and don't use Tyves Spirit, it's still a 550x LB modifier, which is very, very good regardless. Okay, now let's uh, check her uh, TMR vision card and STMR. The vision card is still the same as with Elazul, they share the card. The TMR is exclusive to mana units with 500 static attack, sadly no mana. Um, Angela would have loved this, but so be it. 50% Omnicolor, both physical and magical, and 5% MP regeneration. So it's kind of eh, honestly. It's still good for the mana units that can use it, but overall being exclusive to that one unit type is kind of whatever. The Super Trust Master is the aforementioned two-handed hammer with the huge hammer variants, 1.15 to 
1.95x. It's a 240 attack hammer, meaning it's the highest one in the game, if I'm not mistaken. Has a whopping 100% stone killer, physical and magical, and 200% attack through double hand. But it requires you to wear a hammer, which isn't an issue because if you're using this, you are, you, you are using a hammer. So this is a rather slot efficient weapon. I like it for that. I have three copies of this. On the flip side though, other than Pearl herself, there is no 30 or higher percent weapon in peril to hammers unit. Like I said, I have a feeling that I know why they're doing this and I understand it. But if Dark is not your element of choice, you're probably not gonna end up using Pearl and th that means you don't have anyone to do a hammer in Pearl unless you're in a Clash of Wills scenario using Kaito. It's, it's still kind of air eh, because damage is not an issue in Clash. It is more so in Dark Visions and in Dark Visions other than Pearl or May if you don't have anyone with a hammer in Pearl. So yeah, kind of iffy. And I'm not gonna go over again. Oh, by the way, Pearl also gains 500 static attack. I forgot to mention that. Vision Guard still the same as before. So yeah, TMR is nice attack ba for attack based mana units. The STMR is really good. But again, we need a good Ham and Pearl unit. So, and from all the units that we could get that Gumi hasn't recycled yet from the seven star era, I don't think there is a hammer unit left anymore. I mean, let's be honest, what options do we have for Halloween, for example? There's Lilith, there is um, Godrea. Lilith is a whip user, Godrea is a gun user. Yeah, that's pretty much it. For Winter, we have Levison, who is Mace. There is um, Lucas, who is Fists, there is White Knight Noel, who is I don't know what, but probably not Hammers. So there aren't many units. And then there is um, Lunar New Year, and those are using Fists or Bows mainly. So there aren't there aren't really any Hammer units left, and that's kind of eh to be honest. So yeah, we'll see about that, but. For what it's worth, it's a really good STMR. Alright, let's move on to the damage calculation stuff. As always, if need be, pause the video and check it out. And let's look at the builds. Um, so this is Elazult's build because he is a super limit burst unit without the upside of having uh, two forms to gear for. He has to use Titus's Guard for maximum damage. He also has to use Typhus' Spirit that's too locked out. Um, slots, he has to use Master of Fate, which I hate on SLB units. If you're making an SLB unit, make him slot efficient and not a burden. But peak alum, they just don't care. They just don't want to make a quick buck with these units. And it's being, it, it is, it, it, it reaches its maximum stupidity point with um, the Chrono Cross collab. Three SLB units, all three of them are trash and super bad to gear for, but that's a story for another day. So this is the gear he's using, vetted against a demon aquatic. Yeah, um, I guess still fares decently, but yeah, he can't use his uh, own STMR, which is kind of eh. And then there is a Pearl's build, or the two builds that I opted for. If you're going for the counter build, you do want the top one because it uses type as a spirit, but if you're not using a counter build and just normal attack slash auto attack with her, um, you can forego type as a spirit. You don't have the room for it anyway in a five turn rotation. Both of these builds assume that you're starting in base form for, uh, for Titus's STMR because that one still applies even in her base form, which is rather neat. And um, yeah, she reaches very high amounts of attack and that helps her to do lots of damage. And a lot of damage is translated into our highest current DPS. So Pearl is 106.5% of Jack's damage. And the reason for that doesn't really lie in the attack stats or modifiers. 
it's just the simplicity of having a higher amp because Jack suffers from the fact that he has to mix elements. So on my sheet, Fabled Guardian Jack has his 50% own amp from a water amp. And he also has that 100% um, amp from Sylvie. And I made a mistake, it's not 72%, but 75% um, amp. Or is, does he have actually a 45, 45? Or let me just quickly check what I did there. 145 divided by two. No, uh, I, I'm not quite sure when I'm anymore whether Jack has a 50% or 45% amp. But nonetheless, um, even if he has a 50% amp, it's still 75% averaged. Phoenix is still far below Pearl. So yeah, Pearl definitely at least 5% higher than Jack, if my math is correct and it should be correct. She's 6.5% over jacked, meaning she is the highest damage in the game. Now I base this comparison on the regular pearl, not the counter meme pearl, because even if it is doable, it is highly questionable whether you are going to use Esther or Bulwark in a dark vision environment, because both are rather not that strong anymore. And if you look at the list, you don't even see Esther on this list anymore and you're highly unlikely to use her when you have access to so many better DPS. And the same kind of applies to Ilazul, while he is 90% of Paul's damage, being a little bit weaker, but he is a good substitute to uh, Auron, who has to be or needs to be crowned to do that amount of damage. And I still believe it's not worth it crowning Auron, and it probably never will be, because you could always just use Elazul for about the same damage, which I find the better choice here. But again, both are wind, so if you need a wind team, we both are decent options. And um, because I was asked uh, about the true duo wheel build, yes, there's a true duo wheel build. It is half decent against his best case scenario. And um, but it is a bad verse on a worst case scenario, which my sheet is all about. And the reason for that is you have to sacrifice a whole materia slot for dual wield to make it even work because Ilazul has no innate dual wield. You need to gear for it. And you ideally want to use two of his STMR, and that means you have to sacrifice yet another slot. So you are using Pearl's TMR, you are using Typhus' Spirit, and you're using the dual wield material, leaving you at a single material for anything else, killers in that regard. And that's kind of bad. And I, I hope you guys are seeing why I didn't do a true dual wield build for my sheet, because it's absolutely not worth it on a worst case scenario. He would be probably below Sky, and that means not worth it at all. All right, now let's check out the ratings. Ilazul, let's start with him. So the good side of things, decent damage, excellent TMR, 30% sword in peril. And the bad side of things is that he actually has peak alum SLB kit, literally two abilities and one cooldown, or grandis, I should say. Absolutely no party support. Passives don't make up for, his, for being SLB. He has low uh, resistances. He has low ailment resistances. Uh, has... Um, Attack passives are rather low, especially the true double hand one. I feel like that's the greatest oversight. Forcing us to use Master of Fate on him is such a bad move. I hate it with, with all my being and it should not be a thing. Um, he has a trash vision card, that same applies to Pearl. Uh, low wind in Pearl, though I didn't deduct a point for, for that, as well as the dead chaining family, which also applies to Pearl, but I also didn't the doctor point for this because it's kind of whatever. So all in all, the 3 out of 10, while Ilazol is a strong wind LB chainer, his overall worth is actually really just determined by his TMR, which is the actual price of this banner, to be honest, next to Flammy as TMR, obviously. So as an overall unit, even though he was my favorite in Legend of Mana, he is bad and doesn't do anything at all. And let's just make this very clear. The global unit environment is all about role compression. 
And Ela Zul doesn't compress anything. He's just here for SLB, wind damage, and that's pretty much it. He doesn't do anything at all. And that's not roll compression, that's just tunnel visioning one route. And that's not good unit design for a global environment. And that's why he's a 3 out of 10, meaning not a bad unit at all. He's just super niche, and that niche is wind damage. If you don't use wind damage, you're never gonna use Ela Zul. And even then, there's always a secondary option. And that means you're gonna use that secondary option because we probably have a global answer to that. And that, that same kind of applies to Pearl. She is a 4 out of 10 and that pretty much hinges on that she has a brave shift. Um, she has that gearing ups, uh, upside over Ilazo. And yeah, that, that pretty much is the only difference. You see, she has a super strong super trust master compared to the trust master of Ilazo, super higher damage. Uh, preemptive 200 dark resistance, which I didn't add a point for because uh, while it's nice, it's not game breaking or anything. The 25 hammer and pearl, yeah, it's decent, but still not good enough. And the bad sort of things, she has no party support outside her single use LB film. Very bare bones kit with four abilities in total. Bad vision card, low dark and pearl. And a meme base form that doesn't do anything. I understand it's uh, very faithful to the original game, but it doesn't translate well into FFBE. Still didn't deduct a point for this because I like this flair, even though it kind of is not good for the game. And if you do want to tell me that she does have party support with that cure and stop charm um, removal, don't meme it. It's not worth it. It's not party support whatsoever when she that's the only thing she can do. So while Paul might be the highest damage dealer in the game right now, she is just that. And like I mentioned a minute ago, Global is all about role compression. She has none of that. So that pretty much means she isn't that overall useful in the grand scheme of things. But when you can use dark damage, she is highly valuable and I will try to make her work in the next Clash of Worlds. That one is innately weak to dark, meaning why not try it? What, what's the worst that can happen? And that pretty much closes out today's review. Thank you all for watching. I hope you had good luck with Flammy. But from my, what I've heard, I was super lucky compared to everybody else. So what this tells me is use all my six Flammy Seymour and Farm downvotes on my next videos. Uh, we'll see. But for now, thank you all for watching. We'll see each other Thursday next week, probably, depending on what it is. And until then, have a wonderful rest of the Saturday evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you're from. See you then. Bye bye. Oh, by the way, we're seeing us on Monday for Vision World. See you then.